Chainsaw Man. People like it. It's nice. But we're talking about the author's previous work, Fire Punch. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Manganime Talk. I am so glad you can join us today. Fire Punch. Is it worth your time or not? Let's find out. Fire Punch. I heard so many wonderful things. I heard so many wonderful things. So, I read it. Should you read it? It's 83 chapters long. That's pretty tight. Like your mom. So, it's not too much of an investment. This is such a dark manga. I can see why they didn't make it an anime. It's depressing. The world has devolved into this icy dystopia. Barney Sandals tried to warn you. He tried to warn you and no one would listen. Climate change, climate change, climate change. Alas, it wasn't climate change. It was the ice witch. It was all her fault. She made the world icy. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. There are people who have gained almost like X-Men-like powers where they can do different things and also some of them can regenerate. Our main character, Agni, can regenerate. So what do they do in this world where there's not a lot of food, people are starving? Well, they cut off their limbs, they cut off parts of their body, and they feed it to people to keep them alive. So as we see here, there's an ax being lined up on Agni's arm. His sister swings the ax and cuts off his arm. They deliver it to the local people of the village, and they eat him to stay alive. His sister, Luna, she's cute, and they're both the youngest people in the village, and he cares very much about her. She can also regenerate, but not quite as well. So he says, nope, don't cut off any of your limbs. I'll be the one to cut off my arm and feed the village. Brother, please don't go anywhere. You're all I have left. Their relationship is maybe closer than most siblings, you might say. Someday, when it becomes warm again, won't you see the world with me? Sure, it's a promise. Brother, um, do you want to make a baby? Whoa, let's, um, uh... Brother, I love you. But we're the only young people in the village, so we have to do our best. Listen, we are not in a position to judge. We don't live in an icy dystopia. Incest is wincest? Shh, shh, shh. No. No. We didn't say it. Take it out. Okay, that's done. It's besides the point. <sighs> All right. On one particularly fateful day, an airplane flies overhead and comes to the village. People with guns who've come from the local dystopian town. He introduces himself to Agni, who acts as a representative of his village and says, my name is Doma, state your name. I'm Agni, why are you here? It's a little tense. And as they're about to leave, uh-oh, we found human flesh in every single house. Human flesh, these guys are cannibals. And Doma is horrified people. These people aren't human. And as it turns out, Doma is a gifted one. He's an X-Man, if you will. So he turns around, holds out his hand, my flame will not be extinguished until death. And he sets fire to everyone and everything. And so he literally meant his flames never go out until whatever is caught on fire has turned to ash. It's quite a dangerous flame to catch, you see? Agni is anguishing. He's on fire. It hurts. Have you ever burned yourself? Yes, then you understand. But remember, Agni can regenerate. So. The fire turned flesh to ash, and at the same time, the regeneration started, and this was repeated. I couldn't think. I couldn't speak. The only thing I could do was pray to God. So he's getting burned, but he's healing, and he just keeps getting burned, and it won't stop. At the very least, protect Luna from the flames. Please let her be alive and safe from the fire. Oh, and this is where it gets bad. Because here comes Luna. She's on fire. She's dying. Her regeneration is not as good as his. He remembers what could have been them having a baby. Don't judge. Brother, live. This is the last thing she tells him, live. And it becomes the one word that he keeps in mind the entire story because all he wants to do is die. But his sister told him to live. And what goes through his mind but revenge. I became embroiled in a flame of hate. I will turn him to ash. So years passed, one year, three years, five years. And after eight years of being on fire, he simply gets used to it. Agni is back and he is looking to kill and fight 
and he is very angry and on fire, which makes him quite scary. We are going to briefly talk about another character, Togata. Now Togata is also a regenerator, and she's been alive for hundreds of years, and she is quite skilled in combat. She was alive when movies were around, and she misses movies, so the one thing she wants to do is create her own movie, and she's come across this interesting fireman, which could be the perfect subject for her movie. And just to demonstrate how good her fighting is, on the train she takes out an entire group of men single-handedly for her movie, and wipes them all out, and leaves the train a bloody mess. What a great character. We love our psycho women, don't we? We just love them. She eventually meets up with Agni, and Agni tells her in exchange for her help in finding Doma, he will be her main character. And thus we have such an interesting concept for a story. How is this Binga? Is it worth your time? Well, I will say one of the things that really struck me about it is the author's, let's say, negative view of people. This story, I mean, people are bad. Let me give you an example. This particular instance struck me as a, it happens early on as a, wow, okay, this is what it's gonna be moment. We have this man who comes in with two dogs and he's captured two of our characters. Hey, 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 the two of you are so rowdy. Ah, sorry I'm late. Are any of you allergic to dogs? Gives her a hug. Yes, don't worry. I'll take care of you, I promise. These two are both male dogs. They're both pretty decent fellas. Having sex with these two is your job. Ah, bestiality now. Sex? What is sex, says our young boy, San. What? I actually really enjoy watching people have sex with animals. Come on, take off your clothes and raise your butts high. So all we need to do is raise our butts? And San the boy instantly pulls on his pants and raises his butt. Not to worry, it doesn't happen, they escape. But this just gives you an idea of how humanity is through the eyes of this author. San, who we discussed, when they discover that he has the power of electricity, they hook him up to a machine that provides, pow pow <sighs> that provides power for the town. And it's quite a dark, again, scenario. The whole world has descended into a hellish place where everyone is bad. There is a period of time where Agni finds prisoners, decides that he is going to be the savior, and gets them out. I will save them all. It looks like it's gonna be a revenge tale against Doma. It looks like it's gonna be a story where he saves people. But the strength, the thing about this anime that sticks out more than anything else is how often it completely subverts your expectations. There are time skips, there are plot twists that you will never, ever see coming. And it goes in places that you say, what? Not in the sense that the story twists, but in the sense that this character, Agni, that you get to know, does things that you would never expect. And he is constantly changing as a person. I suppose being on fire for a decade will do that to you. But what does he want? What does he deeply want? We don't really know the entire story. We think he wants to kill Doma. But when he meets Doma, he finds Doma to be this pathetic old man. It's not what he wants. He wants to kill the guy and get his revenge and take things from him and make him suffer. But then Doma kind of turns out to be kind of a good guy. This story is just crazy. It's one of the craziest mangas I've ever read. The ending. Hmm. You could read half the story and try to guess the ending and take a thousand guesses at the ending and you would never ever get it. It is quite bizarre, quite crazy. And you know, you could make the argument that it's a bit pretentious or self-important, but I really liked where it went. We're gonna come back to our central question. Is it worth reading? I would say yes, yes, but I wouldn't have it be your first manga because it is so out there. It's so disturbing at times, so grotesquely violent and gross that you really have to sort of look at it through this lens of the world is a bad place. But it also, the way it makes you feel is 
really quite bad. Maybe it's quite nice to have that sort of feel instead of the power of friendship always prevailing. You know what's actually fun is that this is a protagonist, a main character that you will get against. You'll go back with him and you'll get against again. Agni becomes an anti-hero. Agni at times is so selfish, so self-centered that you're just saying, come on, do you really have to do this? Do you really have to? But if you understand the rage that goes through his heart, you know, it's, it's interesting. These are all things that go through your mind. And it's kind of a manga that you will want to read more than once to pick up on things you missed the first time. It's a ride that you don't know which way it's going to twist and which way it's going to turn. That's uh, about really all I'm going to say about Fire Punch. I would say check it out, read it, before or while you read Chainsaw Man. And we will talk about Chainsaw Man on another episode of Manganime Talk. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. Remember, this is so important. Lives depend on it. If you don't, I'm going to... Well, I'm not going to do anything. Just do it. All right. We'll see you next time, and goodbye. Hey, Tuka. You okay? You want to talk? Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Shut the f up, Bernie. No one cares, you f Anyway, Tuka, everything's going to be okay. Let's talk.